Mark Giesel presents the first course from Naples, Florida, a colorful dish featuring sea scallops topped with an interesting carrot and orange soup. The main course is cooked by Will Greenwood. With Thai gestures, he serves grilled swordfish with red curry sauce, sautéed vegetables with a shrimp and rice cake. Dessert is by Fabrice Marley in Tucson, Arizona, an Ibarra chocolate souffle with mint serrano chili ice cream and a goat's milk caramel sauce. The chef at the dining room, the signature restaurant at the Ritz-Carlton Naples, is Marc Guizot. Born in France, he chefed at the Orient Express in the Reed Hotel in Portugal, in London at Les Saveurs, and at Pierre Gagnier in Etienne, France. The appetizer this time is carrot and orange soup with scallops. The soup is started by extracting carrot juice. To extract the juice, we use that um, machine, which is actually a plain and normal juice extractor. One of the secrets of the recipe is just by using fresh ingredients, not cooking them too long, and just the right amount in the, in the mix. Actually, for that recipe, we use, as you can see, the juice will come up after just a couple of seconds. It's just by pressure, actually it's a blade to turn in and make the juice come up, okay? Eventually, the soup is made with equal parts of carrot juice, orange juice, and chicken stock. We use also the uh, uh, carrots and sliced, we use this type of mandolin, it's called actually a Japanese man mandolin. The blade is very sharp and that gives us uh, the possibility to do a type of julienne through uh, the blade, uh, very thin. That actually uh, gives the help on the process of cooking uh, faster and uh, keep more uh, vitamins, color, and taste for the soup. So the way is very simple, is to go all the way through like this. The soup begins with smashed garlic and olive oil. Just have to roast a little bit the garlic, slowly. Saffron is added to the carrot julienne. Because of the short time of cooking, uh, we can add the saffron uh, with the carrot, actually. That gives more taste and get more time of uh, infusing inside. Okay, so without coloration, we can add all the carrots already. At that time, we can also add a little bit of the cumin. It will be like a, a pinch of a tablespoon. It's actually important to put the spice on the start because once again there will be roast and give a full flavor. What we're looking for is actually to cook the carrots without giving any coloration. Uh, as for a soup, the, the sugar whose content inside the carrots will be uh, fine on the taste if they became uh, with, uh, with color the mix of liquids. That's an equal amount of all three ingredients. That's the carrot juice. And juice. And chicken stock. The soup is brought to a simmer and cooked for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, the chef preps scallops as a garnish. One of the parts of the garnish for that soup are uh, diverse scallops. Uh, those are from Maine, and uh, actually, as you can see, they are u uh, Those type of uh, scallops uh, come live. We clean them, take them apart. Actually, what we do for the soup, the interest, 
interesting point is uh, the taste and uh, also the texture who goes very well as a garnish for the soup. So the way to do it is just cut them, first of all, in half, in half, plain and normally in quarter. We don't try to make it too, too small because I think we want to make sure and you get texture and also that the sea scallop don't become too dry. The scallop pieces are barely colored in olive oil. We need to use, uh, to make sure that they're seared and not boiled. Uh, that will give uh, a little bit of coloration, but also crispiness into it, as you can see. And also what happened on the water and the taste of the sea, sea scallops will be retained inside. The sea scallops don't need to be cooked all the way for the simple reason that they're going to be finished to be cooked by poaching inside the very hot soup. The soup, including the julienne carrot, is mixed with a stick blender. That's actually the right time to check not only the consistency before we pass it through the chinois, but also to taste for the taste, actually. So that, at that stage, we'll use the salt, the pepper, and also double check for the cumin to make sure that we have enough. Presentation begins with the scallops. Our boiling soup. Heavy cream, barely whipped, is also a garnish. For the taste and the cappuccino effect, the cream. We like to bring a little bit of uh, crispiness into it. That's why we use uh, deep fried leeks, as they are. Plain, cook in the fryer. And a little mix of salad, who are called actually microgreen. That's how we serve the soup with uh, our traditional uh, Floridian oranges and carrots and saffron. At taping time, the chef at Sunset Grill in Nashville was Will Greenwood. It was a buzzsaw operation doing 1,200 covers a day. He took some time off and is now relaxing as banquet culinary director at the International Trade Center in Washington, D.C., with upscale banquets for, in one case, 10,000. Here's Thai grilled swordfish. The next dish we're doing is a grilled swordfish, uh, a little variation on a Thai style, actually. Uh, something I like to do. It's with a shrimp cake uh, that's got rice in it. It's kind of interesting, so hope you enjoy this. Um, for the shrimp mousse, I like to use the 7090s, and these are still a little frozen, as you can tell. It makes a really nice mousse if it's still just a little, it's soft, as you can tell, but uh, still a little frozen. Kind of like doing it that way. So you put it in your Robocoop. process it till you have a paste. I find a little bit of salt denatures the protein. Add egg white. And cream. As you can see a nice paste is formed. And because it's so cold it's really, as you can tell, very thick. I've cooked and chilled some basmati rice earlier. 
So it's already cooked, and then I just add the shrimp mousse right to the basmati rice. Just add a little garlic. A little minced ginger. The mixture is started in a ring mold with hot olive oil. This will seize right away and form a nice shape for you. The shrimp and rice cake is finished in a 350 degree oven until golden brown. Next I'm going to make the, uh, the Thai sauce. Um, we're using red curry today, red curry paste. You can buy it in a Thai store. And we're also using uh, the coconut milk. It's also you can buy at a store without a problem. Now one of the secrets for a Thai curry is you want to cook the curry paste to release the flavors. A lot of people don't know that and they just they just put the curry right in and it's not quite as good. So as you're cooking it you start to smell, it releases the, the smell which also means that it's really roasting really well. When it's a really overpowering smell, you know you've, you've completed what you're looking for. Add a little bit of fresh ginger. Add a little bit of minced garlic. Now a lot of times, the coconut milk will separate like this, and it'll be very thick on top. I like to use that top part. What you're left with in the bottom of the can is real watery. So you can certainly use that. I don't prefer that. I really like to use the coconut cream that, that settles to the top. After it's reduced a little bit, take a little bit of uh, your pineapple that I've cut very thin, small pieces. The last part of the dish is to uh, saute some vegetables. Now you can buy these sprouts usually in an oriental store because the bean is such a mature bean you can't find uh, these type of bean sprouts in a grocery store. The veggies are sauteed. Add bean sprouts, add a julienne of snow pea, Julienne or red pepper. Chopped cilantro. And once again, the trusty minced garlic. And just a little bit of salt. It should be mentioned before the dish is assembled that because the grill was situated in another kitchen, the swordfish was cooked off camera. The coconut cream milk and then the cream that I used on top has a tendency to separate just a little bit. Don't worry about that, that's just part of it. Right before you serve it, add a little bit of tomato concasse just to warm through. Stirring last minute puts it together real well. And you add the sauteed vegetables. You add your shrimp and rice cake. 
and your grilled swordfish. We're gonna top this off with a little bit of pickled ginger you can buy in an oriental store. I have a spring roll that I filled with vegetables and enoki mushrooms and we'll just put that off to the side. You've got your completed dish here. And we just add a little bit of the basil oil to complete the dish. Fabrice Mallet was born in Orléans, France. His father was a chef, so the move to the kitchen wasn't a stretch. He cooked in France before coming to Los Angeles. Now pastry chef at Janos Wilder's namesake in Tucson, he offers an Ibarra chocolate souffle with mint serrano ice cream. I'm Janos Wilder, chef and owner of Janos Restaurant and J-Bar in Tucson. With Fabrice Mallet, our pastry chef, we're going to make an Ibarra chocolate souffle tour with some wonderful serrano chili and mint ice cream served with a little bit of cajeta, which is a goat's milk caramel. To make the souffle tort, we're going to start with some eggs, some granulated sugar, some butter and some flour, and two different types of chocolate. This is a Swiss Calvo chocolate, a sweetened chocolate, and this is Ibarra chocolate from Mexico. This chocolate is coarser chocolate flavored with a little bit of cinnamon and some ground almonds. So we added the, chocolate, the two chocolates together over the Ban Marie with the butter and he's whisking those together to melt them together. The base of the souffle is whole eggs and sugar beaten until quite thick and pale yellow. As we see the eggs are about twice their own volume now. We're going for a little bit longer. We are looking for very light, pale yellow, very, very fine air bubble, very fine air pocket in the eggs. Next, we uh, move our eggs to a clean stainless steel bowl. And the next step will be to fold in sifted flour. And we do it in about two, three stages. There we go. The object of folding is to incorporate gently without breaking the little air bubble in the eggs. So we use this movement, folding over gently. There we go. That's number one. 